oh boy. Back at the dawn of aviation in the 1920s, wing walking was an incredibly dangerous stunt. Daredevils would get out of the seat in their plane and just clamber around the wings with, with nothing but their own strength. I mean, maybe there'd be a pole at the top they could attach to once they were up there, but mostly it was just them and their strength against a 100 mile an hour wind. Now, there are still a very small number of folks in the world who do wing walking that way. But in the 21st century, wing walking is a little bit different. roughly from 80 to 160 miles an hour, various in between that, and we'll pull up to 4G. So it's a huge strain on our bodies, and we're doing maneuvers, so we'll lift our legs up, we can do handstands, and we'll also move around. It's like resistance training, it's really hard work. In the loop, we'll get up to about 4G at the bottom, and then as soon as we go over the top, we start waving, because that's a nice weightless bit, so it's easier to start then than start when you're going really quickly. You have about a month of intense training. You practice everything on the ground first and then you just go up in the air and do it repetitively. You fly every day, all day, so it's absolutely knackering. At Eastbourne Air Show, we take off from an airfield near Brighton and we fly along the coast for 20 minutes and then they climb up onto the wing, so they climb up in flight. On the transit flight, the procedure for them to climb onto the wing is for them to unstrap their main seat harness, but at all times they're, they're, they have a carabiner which slides up and down the, the wire their, their cable is about 60 centimetres long, so they can never be more than 60 centimetres away from the centre line of the aircraft. Once they get up onto the wing, the carabiner is then behind them, still attached, and then they strap themselves into the five-point harness, which is on the swivel rig on the wing. And at that point, of course, then they have two methods of attachment. That's totally different to the 1920s. As a civilian, this is a thrill ride. This is something that you can pay for. You can get yourself strapped into this and then just experience it. And yes, this is still a little bit dangerous. We had to wait for five minutes before taking off because there were birds. And a bird strike at this sort of speed could be lethal. And if this plane has problems, I am in a really vulnerable position and there is nothing that I can do about it. Woohoo! But it is safe enough that they can get insurance for this, they can run it legally, and they do have a perfect safety record. Wing walking in the 21st century has to find a match between safety and expressing the folks on the ground. Woo -hoo -hoo! The main difference from having someone on the wing is that there is a significant amount of drag from that person. It's a bit like flying an aircraft with your gear and flaps down you'll need more power to fly and you need to check the trim as well because the people on the wing provide a forward centre of gravity. So at the end of the show, we'll chat to everyone and they'll tell us what they enjoyed. Usually it's when we do the rolls and we go upside down because they can't quite believe that we're strapped on. From the air, you can't see our wire. It's all a bit of an illusion. So it looks like we're not attached and they're like, oh my gosh. So it's a bit of a daredevil thing they think is going on as well. Kids come up to us all the time, especially young girls that are doing gymnastics and think, oh my gosh, that's incredible. So it's really nice to feel like you're a bit of a role model for people. That is exhausting. That is one of the most physically strenuous things I think I've ever done. Oh. Oh. Woo. Ha 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 ha!